Hi, this is Debbie Hodge with Get It Scrapped and Masterful Scrapbook Design. I want to show you how to digitally add a cool technique or a cool feature or element to your page that's from a paper page. And that is these transparency triangles down here. This page is by Corey Jones. She made it for the Oomph and Polish issue of Masterful Scrapbook Design. And I interviewed her yesterday. A lot of students were there asking her questions. And we loved this detail of these wonky cut triangles from Hambly transparencies. So they're transparencies with white stamping on it and they're against a craft background. And this is pretty easy to do in Photoshop for a digital scrapbook page to get your own custom look. So let's take a look at how to do that. So let's open up some craft cardstock for um, our background to put the transparencies against. I keep all my favorite cardstocks in a folder. Here's one by Peppermint Gramberg called Page Craft. So let's open up a page of craft. And I've got a new canvas going, 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to drop that over for the background. And now I need to draw some triangles. Actually, I'm going to draw one triangle. Set your foreground color to white. So click on that and then set it to white. Other ways to do that, if you press D while you're in Photoshop, that sets the default colors. Black as the foreground, white as the background. Press X and it swaps the two of those. So now white is set as my foreground. So anything I draw will be white. Come over here to the polygon tool. It's stored with the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool. Select the polygon tool. Set the number of sides to your polygon to three. And now draw out your triangle. Now I want you to simplify or rasterize this triangle because right now it's a vectorized shape. So you can't do some of the things we're going to want to do to it to modify it we won't be able to do unless we simplify or rasterize it. It's called simplify in some of the older versions of Photoshop Elements. It's called rasterize in my Photoshop CS3. So that would be under layer, rasterize, shape. Now it's rasterized. Now I want to get a little less regular look to it. And one way is just to squish it down using the select tool. Click on the arrow here. And you can move it around. Shape it up in a little bit different way. Another way, I'm going to tilt it a little too. Put it down here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. That's good. I can also change it by going to edit and edit, transform distort and I can get it moving a little bit. So there's my first triangle. I now want to set the fill layer on it to 10% because we want vellum, right? So you can barely see it. I'm actually going to set it to 34 right now so you can see it. So there's my vellum. If I wanted transparency I'd go even lower. Uh, so there's my vellum piece and it's set to the fill for 29 and now let's add a drop sh shadow to it. So layer, layer style, drop shadow and something really important about adding this drop shadow is right down here layer knocks out drop shadow that must be checked. If it's not checked your drop shadow is so dark it shows right through that vellum or transparency. So make sure that's checked and set your drop shadow for the amount of um, shadow that you want poking out. So now we've got this triangle. Now we're going to duplicate this a few times and modify the shape of each one. You can duplicate a layer by targeting the layer in the layers palette and dragging it down to the new layer icon. So I've made a copy, shape one copy. I'll just drag it over here a little. Another way to duplicate it is to target the layer you want to duplicate and press Control J. So there's my third one. So I've got some triangles. Thing is, they all look the same and we wanted a little more wonky cut kind of thing going on. So go back to playing with your um, just the regular transform or edit transform. You could try perspective. That'll give it some different shape to it. And now over this one, I'll use distort, edit, transform, distort. Give it a little bit different size. Okay, so now I've got three triangles and they're all slightly different shapes and sizes. They're all set with the fill layer down to 34% and they all have a little bit of a drop shadow. So now we have our triangles and now let, me, now let me show you how to put some patterns on them in white. Let's go back and look at Corey's page and see what kind of features she had on hers. 
So she's got some wood grain, she's got some hexagons, uh, a trellis pattern, some chevrons. So let me show you a few different sources you can use to get those shapes that you're going to put on there. So I'm going to go on over. I've got a lot of masking products that I've purchased, so they would work. And I buy a lot of masks from Splendid Fiends over at jessicasprague.com. So right there's a wood grain one. So let me go check that out. The thing about this is it's um it's a, a PNG file. So I'm going to open up this wood grain. When I say PNG file, that means that it's got a transparent background. In other words, the only thing here are the lines of the wood grain. There's no color backing them up. So I want to put wood grain on one of them, and I want it to be white. To, to make it white, I target the layer in the Layers palette, and on the thumbnail for that layer, Control click That selects everything on that layer that's positive. And now, making sure that white is now my background, so I'll go D, because that's the default. It sets black to the foreground, white to the background. And if you press Control backspace, it will fill everything selected with the color that you have as your background. So I hit Control backspace to fill it. Now Control D to deselect. Now come on over here and pick the triangle that you'd like that to be on. I'd like it to be on my first triangle. Come back over here to my wood grain and I will drag it over to my canvas. It's a little big so I'm going to size it down so I can see more detail in the wood grain and I'm going to tilt it a little bit. So I've done that, and I want that to just fill that one triangle. Usually you might think we would clip it to it, but if we clip it to it, let me show you, it doesn't show up because the fill of that is only 29%, so it's not strong enough, it's not there enough for a clipped item to show. So I'm not going to clip it to it. Instead, I'm going to target the triangle la la layer, Control click on that thumbnail for the layer and see what that does. It puts the marching ants around my triangle. So the area of that triangle is selected. Now I will go to the wood grain layer and press Control J. Remember I told you that copies a new layer? Well, it only copies what's selected. So I'll press Control J. Now let me hide that original wood grain layer and see it copied just that amount of wood grain that had been selected. So now that's layered on my vellum or my transparency. And I'm going to select both of those layers. So I've got the wood grain layer and the triangle layer selected. And then I'll press this link right here, this chain link. And that means anytime I move either one of them or resize either one of them, they go together. So that keeps them there nice and tidy. If you wanted more of a transparency look to it, you could take the fill layer back even more. See? Cool. Another source for patterns that you could clip would be cut files, silhouette cut files, because it's anything that you've got an outline or a shape for. So I think there's a, I've got a Jenny Bolin um, cut file. Here it is, this doily. So I'm going to open that up. Go to file, here's the doily, open it up. And this is just basically, we've got the shape. So again, I want it white. So Control click on the thumbnail in the layers palette. Make sure my background color is set to white. Press Control backspace to fill it with white. Press Control D to deselect. Now I'll come on over here and figure out which triangle I'd like it clicked to, connected to. I'm going to use the middle triangle. So now let me drag my doily to the layer above that triangle. Now I will select the area that triangle fills, but target the doily layer, and let me hide that doily layer. Press Control J and look at copied the part of the doily that was selected to a new layer, and it's the same size as that triangle. And now I will connect those two layers, the doily cutout and the triangle, and I'll connect them with the chain link. I'm going to delete that big doily layer. I'm also going to delete that big wood grain layer because I don't need those. All right, let's see one more source for um, the patterns that you could put on your page. What if you don't have these PNG files? Like I happen to have this mask and this silhouette cut file. Find a pattern paper that you like that has a design in one color. So let me come on over here to my, see what kind of papers I've got. 
There's a lot of geometric kind of pattern papers on the market now, and those all would work really well. Let's see, here's a line by Allison Kraft. Here's a, here's a trellis pattern. It's not a PNG file, it's not transparent, but there's, the yellow is nice and solid. So we can go select that yellow and make our own PNG. So open the file. So this is pattern paper, and I'd like the pattern that that dark yellow makes to be my design that I'm going to put on my transparency or vellum. So with that paper open, come on over here to your toolbar and select the magic wand. It's stored with the quick selection tool, depending on the version you have. But we want the magic wand. Set the tolerance to 32, anti-alias, and contiguous. And now come on down here, make sure you've selected the layer and using your magic wand and you might need to zoom in click right on the color that you want to select see I selected that yellow and it selected all the yellow on there so I'm going to press control J that copy just that bit to a new layer I'm hiding the background now alright so we want to bring that over uh, we want it white so control click on the area that it feel, fills make sure your background color is set to white control backspace to fill it control D to deselect and now get the selection tool make sure you've got your triangle your empty triangle targeted now we'll go over here and we will drag the trellis to the layer right above the triangle so let's see I've got my trellis on layer 9 and then I've got my triangle right below it. So control click on the thumbnail in the layer palette to select just the area that triangle fills. Now make the area with the trellis active. Press control J to copy that to a new layer. Hide the big trellis layer so you just have the little one and then link it to the triangle below. So there's three different ways, and again, I think I'm going to pull back the fill on each of those. I left it a little more full for you when I was working because I wanted you to be able to see it. I didn't want it to be totally pale, but maybe I'll pull it back to like 9% to get more of a transparency kind of feel with it. With it. Let's see, pull back that one too. There we go. So I've got my three triangles. So I've shown you how to cut triangles modify their size so that they're a little wonky look like they were cut with scissors add a drop shadow making sure that you've selected let me show you this layer knocks out drop shadow so that you don't see the drop shadow behind it see otherwise that drop shadow shows through make sure that's selected on your drop shadow for it and then find three I showed you three different sources for the patterns that you'll use on your transparency one is PNG files or, or masks products that were made digital products that are made to be misted over another would be silhouette cut files because there's often a PNG file with those and another is to take a pattern paper that you like and select one color in it and bring that on over so good luck everybody getting this kind of look that Corey Jones had on her page let's take a look one more time at her page Let's see, I've got that over in my Masterful Scrapbook Design folder. It was part of the Oomph and Polish issue in which she actually had tons of great ideas. And there's her page. So she's got that triangular effect going along the bottom, and that's what we were aiming for. So good luck. Leave me questions if you have them.